I'm a blessed man. And Bible says to whom much is given, much is going to be required. So out of my love for you, for the ministers, I'm going to ask some hard questions. That's what we call accountability. See, we ask everybody questions and nobody asks us any questions. But today we are here. In 1970s, 80s, 90s, several ministers I have known, some of them traveled with me to India and preached to multitudes, traveled with me all over Africa, preach and minister. But today, they are no more. In a ministry. And you wonder what happened. Why are they not ministering? And so the first session I'm just going to lay a foundation. And then we're going to get deeper. Our text for this session is Romans eleven twenty nine. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. God doesn't change his mind. He has not, he will never change his mind. First Corinthians one twenty six. We were so excited about this. God chose the foolish, the weak, the base, the despised, the powerless to call into the ministry. And we were so excited that we qualify. But as the time went by, you don't even know what happened. But the gifts and calling of God can never be withdrawn. And this is the best of all. In a message Bible says, for the gifts and calling of God under full warranty. How many of us get a car and get a washing machine and a dryer with the idea that you got a full warranty and you go over there and they say, did you read the fine print? I'm here to tell you. There is no fine print. God called you. You are still called. And this whole three sessions is last three three times we met. I came like a like a hammer and hit you so hard. That's why some of them decide not to come, but, uh, uh, but I'm glad you came because this is putting it together. And this session is for those who has screwed up. Because of sin. I'm not talking about anybody else, yours. Because of failures, because of fear of rejection, because of insecurity. And I was sitting here, as soon as I bowed my knees, the word of the Lord came unto me. He said, some of you sitting here are scared of anointing, so you don't want to get into it. You know everything about it. You know you call. You know God all the But you are just. I have come here to tell you. 
It is God who qualifies. Who are you to disqualify yourself? The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. He doesn't change his mind. Say it. I am still under warranty. I am still under warranty. So let me ask you a question. Are you doing what God has called you to do? Our problem is this. We do everything in the ministry. And again, I'm not saying it is bad. It is good. But question is this. Is that your primary calling? Are you doing what he has called you to do? If not, why not? Are you chasing dreams? Your dreams. I got to get a good education. Then I will go. You're looking to a guy who is a professional student. I got two bachelors, two masters and two doctorates. But some of you. To you, your image is more important than the call. I want to have a three or four letters behind my name. Then what? God help you if you... Don't die today. You're going to stand before God. And God is going to ask you only one question. I call you as an apostle, as an evangelist, as a pastor, as a teacher, as a music director, as a this, 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 this. I was doing everything. God said, that's not the question. Why are you not doing What are you pursuing? What are you chasing? So welcome. <laughs> and especially I'm talking to the people who have messed up, who have screwed up, who are disappointed, tired, weary, for X, Y, Z reason. You don't feel like going in to ministry or you are in a ministry but you just coasting you don't give your 110 welcome I'm going to fill your tank up by the spirit of the living God my scripture is even if we are not faithful. He still cannot deny himself. Second Timothy 2.13. Even if we are unfaithful. So my objective for this. Get back in the fight. Get back in the race. Finish the course. You know why you don't want to do all these things? Let me tell you something. Don't take yourself so seriously. Take God seriously. Don't take yourself so seriously. He knows you are nothing but made of the dirt. He knows our frame. And he's still called. When he called you, 
He knew you're going to mess up in 2017. He still called you. Our problem is this. We think too much of us. What would they say? What they say? They are not going to stand before God and answer for you. You're going to stand before God and give an answer. I call you to do this. Why are you running? How long are you going to keep running? Let me tell you something. A day is coming. You're going to run right into him like today. In this life, we do fall, we stumble, we mess up, we screw up. But the one who has called me is faithful. Say, the one who has called me. He is faithful. Let me say this to you. Do you know you are a Hall of Fame candidate? You are a hall of faith candidate. Focus on God. And I know all of you are scholars, all of you are preachers and teachers, so you all know all these scriptures. So just let me just run through it. 1 Corinthians 1.9, 1 Corinthians 1.9. God is faithful by whom you were called. My first minister's conference, I asked a question, who called you? You got jacked because your mama had called you. You got tired and weary because your denomination organization called you. Your senior pastor called you because he needed a flunky to run his errands. And you know he wasn't called. But you showed up. That's why you're tired. That's why you want to give up. Well, I know Nick Hearns in my family, so I got to do what. No, you don't. We got to get the family legacy going on. Newsflash. It's the family of God. Second Thessalonians 3 and 3. God is faithful who will establish you. And keep you from evil. Let me say something to you. On this journey as a minister of the gospel. God will strengthen you inside you. And protect you from external enemy. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God is faithful. There is no temptation that you cannot handle. And some of you couldn't handle it. So that's why we're here. Jesus is our exit. He is the way out. But let me say something. Trials from God are to strengthen you. And temptation from the devil is to take you out. So don't confuse. Test of God and a trial of the devil. Sometimes God is testing you. And you're blaming the devil. God is faithful. Hebrews 7.25. Hebrews 2.17. Right now, God is there. But Jesus is representing you in the presence of God. And say, that's my child. I call. God is faithful to forgive your sin. Sin is a debt. With Jesus paid, sin is a stain where the blood removed. God is faithful. Philippians 1 and 6. Philippians 1 and 6. Paul said, being confident of this very thing, 
that we have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He will perform it, not you. See, our trouble is this. We're trying to do it all. But let God help you. Let him increase every day. Let me decrease every day. God is going to see you through, sir. Let me say, ma'am, God will see you through. Say, God, God will see me through. I have been, I've been preaching for 43 years. Many, many, many dangers and toils I already have come. You're too late to come and tell me it don't work. I'll be broke more than 100 times. People have betrayed me. Misunderstood, talked about me, walked out on me. But guess what? I am that I am by the grace of God. I can do all things with the help of Jesus who has strengthened me. Somebody walked out on you with your crazy self. You're going to walk out on God? What is wrong with you? Well, they walked out on me. God will never, ever, ever, ever walk out on you. I will never, 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 never leave you and forsake you. Why your soul is so overwhelmed? I don't have money. I don't have people. I don't. You got God. Oh, by the way, I, 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 I forgot one point in the beginning. Huh? You look at this bishop, that bishop, that bishop. They run 3,000, 4,000, and here you are uh, with 10 people. And so you disqualify yourself comparing with this and this and this and that. But Bible says... Look at here, don't write to me. I didn't say that. Bible say, if you compare, you stupid. And there are too many stupid people living the ministry. For the last few years, I don't have any musician. Have no musicians. But you see me. Just because I don't have musicians, you think I'm going to shut this joint down? You know why we ain't got many musicians? They've got a list. Yeah. Oh, the going price for a keyboard player is this. Yeah. For a drummer is this. Yeah. For a guitar. Hey, 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 hey. Keep walking. Yeah. You come to church Sunday morning and look at empty keyboard. All the drummer, nobody there. And he says, oh God. Shut your mouth. Bible says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And he will sustain you. God call you. You don't need all this drama. If you got it, more power to you. Your calling doesn't depend on what they do or what they don't do. Your calling depends on what you do. Don't 
shall not go with me. I will follow you all the days of my life. All the days of my life. I will follow you. I will follow you. Mm. God will see me through. The very first time I went overseas, my son, he was one month old. Then I went six months old. No money. But went anyway. Because I knew God had called me to do. See, you want God to give you a whole lot of money and a whole lot of people and a whole lot of musicians. Then you say, now I am ready. I am ready the day he said, I have called you as a prophet into the nation, prophet over the kingdom. And I say, yes, Lord, it don't matter. He's a way maker. If he say go, he will take care of you. Some of you not going in a ministry. You know why? You're worried about who's going to feed you. Let me ask you a question. Who is feeding you now? God is faithful. Even if we believe not. Yet, he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. Question, why he cannot deny himself? Because of his character. He is holy. He's a God of integrity. He cannot and will not be unfaithful to you. Last week, somebody gave me a, gave me a CD by Sissy Wynan. And she said, in the old days, when Sissy used to go to the church, the old folks used to sing, he hasn't failed me yet. That is my testimony. That's a testimony of everybody in the Bible. So for the next few minutes, let me give... And if you remember, I had left you with this thought last year. I know you forgot. That's all right. <laughs> we preach from the Old Testament about the folks who failed, who screwed up, who messed up, but never go to New Testament. So today, for the next few minutes, I'm going to take you to the New Testament Hall of Fame, Hall of Faith. Right. Now listen to this. All them jokers. Did you hear me? In the Hebrews 11, show me one who didn't screw up. So you're not the only one. You're not that special. <laughs> See, the devil will beat you upside your head. God is through with you. How can you screw it up? You know better than that. Uh, let me talk to you about a few folks who knew better than that. Again, Hebrews 11, start out with Noah, the whole world. You know, I'm not going to go in Abel and those people. I'm just going here. Okay, Noah. The whole world was full of violence and God said, my grace is, mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm going to wipe all them jokers out. But the Bible say, and Noah found grace. 40 days and 49, 120 years of preaching, he built an ark. God protected him. He comes out. Watch it now. Watch it now. Noah comes out. Builds an altar. Worships God. 
and then get drunk. Oh, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Uh, you build an altar on Sunday. I'm talking to the preachers now. You build an altar on Sunday. You worship God and Sunday afternoon you screw up. Or you might wait till Monday. But you're going to screw up. So don't talk to me about Noah. He got drunk. And he was the first man naked. Oh, come on now, y'all. But God, who is faithful, your unfaithfulness does not disqualify you. God say, by faith Noah build. God remembers what you build, not what you tear up. You build that little church, God remembers you. You take care of the little babies, God remembers you. Let's go, Abraham, mm -mm -mm, the father of faith. Who is this woman? That's my sister. That's your sister. See, we preach. Listen to me. We preach. Abraham was a liar. Hold up. What does God call him? Uh 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 uh. uh let, let me bring it to you. The Lord appeared to King Abimelech and said, Look here, man, it's like this. Touch the woman, you die. He shut the womb of every woman. And then what did God say? Abraham, my prophet. Let him pray for you. You call yourself a liar. And God calls you a prophet. I'd rather go with God. I'd rather go with God. I'd rather go with God. It's not what you say about you. It is not what all the knuckleheads say about you. What does God say? He called you a prophet. Even if you don't do that thing, you're going to die as a prophet. And you're going to stand before God as a prophet. Sarah. She laughed. I am wax old. Shall I have pleasure in my old age? And the Lord said, mm -hmm, I'm going to fix you. <laughs> See, the devil wants you to build your monument on your shortcomings and your failures. Ask somebody, in 1992, I did this. What year is this? Lord, so I'm going to give you a son. Uh huh. You're going to call him laughter. So Isaac comes up. I'm talking about the people who screwed up. And they still made it in a hall of fame. Huh? You don't know. You think that uh, 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 Hebrew 11. Let me tell you something. Hebrew 11 is still going on. I don't know about you. My name is there. My name is there. Newsflash. Your name is there too. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Why are you camping on your shortcomings? Isaac did the same thing. Like father, and like son. Your lying doesn't disqualify you. So don't go out and say, Pastor Stephen, say, go ahead and lie. <laughs> you all better be. <laughs> 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 
and my favorite of the favorite one, Jacob. That's my man. The smooth, the slick, the hustler, the crafty, the conniving, the calculating. Is there any preach? Oh, I, 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 I was talking. <laughs> I was talking about Jacob. I forgot. <laughs> Are you still hustling? You know why you hustling? Because you think you got to do it. Stop the hustle. Let God be God. Moses. Well, the whole second session is about Moses. So let me just go ahead and uh, uh, give him a break here. Afraid, scared, fearful. And Moses was like some of us. Run, baby, run. <laughs> Screw up and you run. If you're going to run, run to God. He's your father. He loves you. He will not throw you away like some people do. But think is this. They didn't call me. Some of you don't preach hard. You know why? Because you think uh, the one who gives a lot of money will walk. Let him walk with his money. You know why your breakthrough hasn't come? Because you're not looking to Jehovah. You sing about Jehovah. Huh? But you look at the man, rich man. Or the rich, you better go on. Gideon. Hmm. You know, everybody wants to talk about Gideon. But my biggest problem with the preachers, and including me, before I had this revelation, huh, we just choose and pick what we want to preach to prove our point. Gideon and his 300. You remember that? It is the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon. You preach. Let me ask you a question, preachers. When was the last time you preached about how he died? Do you know how he died? If you don't, come back next, uh, next year, I will tell you. <laughs> how did Gideon die? In the back of his mind, he always wanted to be like a king. And after he destroyed everybody, everybody came to him and said, man, you know what? you like a king, kingly material. Be our king. With his mouth, he said, no, I cannot be king. But behind, he is hustling. And he got everybody to build him an effort. Do you understand? Gideon destroyed the idol worship, but in his dying, he instituted idol worship. Oh, some of you didn't know that. Well, read your Bible, you will know. He knocked down the idols, but at the end, after God gave him a success, he built this effort. Come on, I have the power. And they went back to the idol worship. Fast forward, that joker still made it. In the hall of faith. Why? God is faithful who has called you. Samson, you remember we talk about it in a second minister's conference. He man with the she weakness. Oh, oh, you didn't get that. Supernatural birth, supernatural calling. But the first word out of the man's mouth. 
Mm-mm-mm, see good. Huh? Oh, no, you, you didn't. Did you get what I just said? The first word out of the anointed, supernaturally born, first word out of his mouth was not, Thus saith the Lord. The first word out of his mouth, Mm-mm-mm, see, look good. And that was his weakness all the way down. But guess what? Delilah did not make it in a hall of fame. Samson did. You know why? Because God had called him. I can stay here for a quick second. So if you have messed up with the sexual... Don't look at me like that. Bring it here close. If you have messed up sexually, immorality, let me tell you something. He just a whisper away from restoring you. In a moment of your weakness, or whatever X, Y, Z happened, and here, all these years, that is haunting you, haunting you. How could I? I love my wife, but I did this, I did this. And again, I'm not giving you a pass. All I'm saying, let God strengthen you internally, help you externally. Get back! Repent! Get back in the game. Samson said, Lord, I done screwed up. Uh, remember me. All you got to do is just call. Remember me. Remember me. And as if it was not the only one, Samson, uh, King David. Let me make a statement here. The one who conquered the external giants couldn't handle the giant inside him. Winning all the external battles. Losing battle. Let me ask you a question. Which battle are you losing? Call on God. He couldn't conquer the internal giant of lust. Okay, now. I got about two and a half minutes. I'm going to talk about one man. And I know this will help you. Some of you know I travel all over the world. But when I talk about this point, listen to this, apostles. Listen to this. When I talk about this point, 10, 15,000 pastors. I'm talking about senior pastors. And when I talk about this point, the whole altar is full. And this is the point. This is the point. And listen, and listen to me good. Samuel the prophet, he saw Eli's family destroyed. God talked to him. But listen to me. His own sons. His own sons. Did not walk in the way of the Lord. But Samuel made it in a hall of fame. Let me ask you. Is the devil beating you upside your head? Huh? You, you, you cannot be a minister. And your boys and your girls, they're all jet. Your grandkids are hustling. They're all dead. And you say, sure. And you back off. You better listen to me today. When he say train up a child, he talk about little baby. He ain't talking about these 20 and 30, 40 years knuckleheads. So why are you bidding yourself for your 40 year fool? Who makes his choices? And then you're going to disqualify because your son and your daughter or your grandkids, they're not following God. Let me tell you something. Huh? I do. 
just, just, just give it to God. They came to Samuel and said, Samuel, we cannot put your boys to church. Here we go. End of the session one. The one who called you is faithful. Huh? Leave your boys, your daughters, in the hand of God, and you get back. He, hola makasaya, he that puts his hand on the plow and looks back. You are not fit for the ministry. And this message is to get you back. Don't let their mistakes disqualify you. Huh? God qualified you. He chose you. Get back in the game. In Jesus' name. Amen.